Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. We've seen many James Bond films since the release in 1965 of Thunderball, but this one ranks highly in the franchise's history. It's not necessarily the best movie for the entire spy saga, nor is it the most expensive, but it's one of the most iconic Bond installments. It's a movie that came along at exactly the right time and teased fans in just the right way. The storyline goes that led by one-eyed evil mastermind Emilio Largo, the terrorist group Spectra hijacks two warheads from a NATO plane and threatens widespread nuclear destruction in order to extort 100 million pounds. The dashing Agent 007 is sent in to recover the warheads from the heart of Largo's lair in the Bahamas, facing underwater attacks from sharks and men alike. He must also convince the enchanting Domino, Largo's mistress, to become a key ally. In 1959, Bond creator Ian Fleming began considering a film version of his character and collaborating with producer Kevin McClory and writer Jack Whittingham on a screenplay treatment that they would do. Fleming eventually tired of the movie business and went back home to Jamaica to write his next Bond novel, that being Thunderball. McClory later sued claiming the novel used elements from the film that they had worked on together. The suit settled out of court, but McClory was granted certain rights to Thunderball in the process and ultimately served as a producer on the film. Terrence Young was not the original director of the project. The producers Albert Broccoli and Harry Saltzman originally wanted Guy Hamilton fresh off the success of the third Bond film, Goldfinger. But Hamilton just didn't have the energy for the project. He felt like he was drained of ideas, and although he was very fond of Bond, he felt like at that point he had nothing to contribute to the project until he could recharge his batteries. The producers then turned to Terrence Young, who directed both Dr. No and From Russia With Love. Thunderball would be his final Bond film. Director Hamilton later went on to direct Connery again in Diamonds Are Forever and Roger Moore in Live and Let Die and also The Man with the Golden Gun. There were hundreds of actresses that were considered for the key role of Domino. She was set to be the most complex Bond girl yet and the producers looked at hundreds of actresses for that role. Among the biggest names were Julie Christie, Raquel Welch, and Faye Dunaway. But the role eventually went to Claudine Auger, a former Miss France, who ended up being perfect for the part. The Bell rocket belt used in the film's opening sequence was a real working jetpack, and two qualified pilots were flown to France to operate it for the moment when Bond lifts off. Bill Souter, who flew the jetpack on camera, was initially asked if he would mind flying without a helmet so that Bond could look cooler. He immediately refused for safety reasons, which is why Connery wore a helmet in the final film. Martine Beswick recalled an incident involving Sean Connery during the production. One time they had finished shooting the film for that day, and there were hundreds of people just milling around on the beach, all roped off and just watching. Sean called to his hairdresser and said, Hey, here you. Then he simply pulled off his toupee and threw it at the hairdresser. The hairpiece sailed over like a frisbee, and the hairdresser caught it, in one snag, with Connery exclaiming, that's it, I'm off for the day. Everyone that was watching just collapsed with laughter. 
In the underwater scenes where Bond encounters sharks, Sean Connery was supposed to be protected by clear plastic panels shielding him from the sharks in the close-ups. However, these panels only extended about three feet in height, and the sharks could jump over them. As a result, in some of the scenes, Connery got much closer to the real sharks than he wanted. The director said in an interview afterwards that those scenes used in the movie where Bond reacts in fright at the approach of a shark, was Connery really reacting in genuine terror as the shark approached unobstructed by the plastic shielding? This is the only Bond movie that we get a glimpse of all double-O agents in one shot. They are summoned to M's briefing, and 007 is the last to join in. He sits down in the only available chair, the seventh from the left. Only one of the other double O's is revealed, as most are filmed from behind. The budget for this film was more than the combined budgets for the first three Bond movies. It's rumored that a Royal Navy engineer approached the producers of the film after the movie's release to ask them how they designed the mini rebreather. Apparently, he had been working on something very similar, but just couldn't figure it out. He was then devastated when the producers told them their secret. The actors were holding their breath. Martin Beswick played one of the gypsy girls in From Russia with Love and Paula Kaplan in this film. She is well tanned in the movie, but before shooting began, she was pasty white pale due to years of stage work in England. So before they started filming in the Bahamas, she was required to spend approximately two weeks sunning herself to get the proper tan for a native girl. Now Molly Peters plays the nurse, Pat, that's tending to Sean Connery, and she holds a respectable honor in being the first Bond girl to take her clothes off on screen. At that time, this was considered racy and over-the-top controversial. A big portion of those scenes that were shot were cut from the film, but she still holds the honor of being the first Bond girl to undress on screen. She just recently died at the age of 75 and had a very fleeting acting career, spanning just a handful of films. But this one put her on the map. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.